सो हे गाइस हेलो एंड वेलकम टू अनदर वीडियो ऑफ स्पीडी मेडिकल इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टेक ऑन द आयरन डेफिशिएंसी एनीमिया बिफोर वाचिंग दिस वीडियो डू मेक श्योर दैट यू हैव वॉच माय प्रीवियस वीडियो ऑन द माइक्रोसिटिक एनीमियाज बिकॉज इन दैट वीडियो I have made the foundation of all the microcytic anemias like what is the basic pathogenesis behind the microcytic anemias so if you watch that video understanding this video will be super easy for you so without wasting time let's start this video now guys in case of microcytic anemias you know that the mcv is less than 80 and this mcv is less than 80 micrometer cube because the rbcs they have undergone an extra division and the rbcs they have gone extra division because the hemoglobin inside those rbcs or those precursor rbcs was less than the normal now there were various reasons for why that hemoglobin was less than normal and among those reason the most important was that the decreased iron supply so as a result of the decreased iron supply there will be decreased you know there will be decreased heme and there therefore there will be decreased hemoglobin and whenever there is a decreased hemoglobin the anemia that we get is called as the microcytic anemia and in case of microcytic anemia the mcv is less than 80 micrometer cube now this is the basic pathophysiology of the iron deficiency anemia now this whole video will revolve around three parts first of all what is the normal metabolism of iron second what are the causes of iron deficiency anemia and third what are the laboratory findings that we do in case of iron deficiency anemia so let's understand what is the normal physiology of iron you know that the iron it is taken into our system in two forms that is the heme form and one is the non heme form now the heme form is one in which the iron is present in fe plus 2 state and the non heme form is one which in which the iron is present in fe3 plus state now among this heme and non heme form it is the heme form that is super easy to be absorbed and non heme form takes little bit longer time to be absorbed now the next question is where does the absorption take place now the first part of small intestine that is the duodenum it is the site where the iron absorption will take place and on this duodenum there are specific transporters which are called as the dmt transporter so these cells they have transporters that are called as the dmt transporters and these dmt transporters are those through which the absorption of both ferrous as well as ferric form it take place or the heme and the non heme form <coughs> sorry now on the basal side we have a protein or a channel which is called as ferroporitin this is highly regulated channel and we are not going into deep so we have a channel which is called as ferroporitin and through this channel the iron it will enter into the blood and now in the blood it will find a special protein which is called as the transferrin now the iron will be bonded to this transferrin protein and it will be transported across the blood to its storage site now the next question is what are the storage sites now actually the storage sites of iron are nothing but they are the liver and they are the bone marrow now in the liver and the bone marrow the iron is stored in the macrophages complexed to a protein which is called as the ferritin so iron is stored as ferritin both in the liver as well as in the bone marrow so that is how the whole of iron it is absorbed and it is stored in the bone marrow now there are certain things or there are certain parameters which we have to understand in order to understand what are the various sort of abnormalities with iron and related stuff the first thing is the serum iron now the serum iron is the iron that is present in the blood itself or in the serum not in the stored form obviously so if somebody asks you what is the serum iron so it is the iron that is bonded to this transferrin because naturally this will be the iron that is present in the blood so this is the serum iron that is the iron which is bound to transferrin the second 
question or the second uh, aspect of iron is what is ferritin so you know that ferritin is the stored form of iron so iron in its stored form is stored as ferritin and if the stored iron is more naturally ferritin will be more and if the stored iron is less naturally the ferritin will be less now there is a point which is called as tibc so that is called as total iron binding capacity now if i ask you to think about what is the total iron binding capacity just by reading the name total iron binding capacity meaning how much the blood can bind with iron or how much uh, you know the blood can carry the iron so naturally you know that in the blood there is only one protein that can carry the iron and that is the transferrin so naturally the total iron binding capacity will be the amount of transferrin that is present in the blood so if the amount of transferrin in the blood increases then naturally the tibc will increase and if this transferrin it decreases naturally the tibc will decrease last thing is the percentage saturation now the percentage saturation is the amount of transferrin that is saturated with iron that is let's suppose there are 100 molecules of transferrin in the blood now if i ask you that 50 molecules of those transferrin they are saturated with iron then the tibc will be 50% but uh, under normal circumstances the percentage saturation is 33% which means that about 33% of the transferrin molecule that is 33 out of 100 molecules they are saturated with iron now there is a phenomena or there is a relationship between the ferritin and tibc and which is a inverse relationship now i'll explain you how so let's suppose that in your body the iron reserves are more which means that the ferritin will be more now the natural response of the body will be to stop more iron coming inside the body and what is bringing that iron into the storage sites yes transferrin so naturally if the ferritin is increased it will try to draw up the transferrin that is it will try to drop the total iron binding capacity and that is how the relation between the ferritin and the tibc develops that is the ferritin is inversely proportional to tibc if by any reason the ferritin increases then the total iron binding capacity will decrease this point has to be remembered because it will be really helpful in understanding what is going on when i'll tell you the iron studies in iron deficiency anemia sidro plastic anemia and thalassemia so this was the first question in our video that is we had to understand the normal physiology and uh, you know metabolism of iron now next we have to understand what are the causes of iron deficiency anemia now there is a really nice way to understand the what are the causes of iron deficiency anemia and uh, there is a chart actually that is really age specific like for particular age group there are particular causes of iron deficiency now in case of infants the most common cause of iron deficiency is nutritional because you know that the infants they are primarily breastfed and the breast milk is deficient in two things one is the iron and one is the vitamin d so as a result of the breast fed infant there will be iron deficiency anemia similarly in case of children the same scenario will prevail and since there is malnutrition in the children and as a result of malnutrition there will be decreased iron and it will lead to iron deficiency anemia now if we talk about the adults in case of adults the cause is depends upon whether it is a male or it is a female in case of male the cause is mainly the peptic ulcer disease you know that in case of peptic ulcer disease there are ulcers in the duodenum or in the gast uh, or in the stomach and it can lead to bleeding and as a result of bleeding there will be iron deficiency anemia now in case of females it is primarily due to menorrhagia so if the female is having menorrhagia and you know abnormal uterine bleeding then it can lead to iron deficiency anemia if we talk about the elderly then this thing is very very important to know and uh, to remember always 
If in any case a elderly presents to you with an iron deficiency anemia, then you have to suspect the colorectal carcinoma until proven otherwise. So in case of elderly, the most common cause of iron deficiency anemia is colorectal carcinoma until proven otherwise. But in the developing countries, there can also be infestation of hookworm like, you know, Necator, Americanus and Ankylostoma, which can lead to, you know, damage to the mucosa of colon and small intestine and can lead to bleeding. And as a result of bleeding, there will be loss of iron leading to the iron deficiency anemia. So this was the second, uh, you know, question of our video, like what are the causes of iron deficiency anemia and the causes are really infant specific, child specific, adult specific and elderly. Now, the last question remains, what are the findings in case of iron deficiency anemia? So if we talk about what are the findings in case of iron deficiency anemias, so findings are really two types. One are the clinical findings which you can see in the clinics that is what are the symptoms and what are the signs and then there are the laboratory findings which you have to investigate. Now, the clinical findings are first that of anemia, obviously the patient has anemia, therefore he will present with the features of anemia like pallor, weakness, fatigue, dyspnea, lightheadedness, headache and uh, coronary artery disease if there was pre-existing, you know, angina. First, second, second finding which is really very specific to iron deficiency anemia is what is called as coilonychia. Now, what is coilonychia? In case of coilonychia, what happens over there is that the nails, they get shaped like spoons and they get flat and shaped like spoons and this is called as coilonychia that is the spoon shaped nails and this is really a finding of iron deficiency anemia. The third cause of uh, the third clinical finding in case of iron deficiency anemia is pica and pica is you know is a irresistible desire to eat the non-nutritious substances like that child or adult may be eating you know soil or he may be eating some metal things or stuff like that and that is due to the manifestation of iron deficiency. If we talk about the laboratory findings we'll uh, study the two things first of all we'll study the peripheral blood film and then we'll study the iron studies now in the peripheral blood film you know that there will be microcytic hypochromic anemia that is the rbcs they will be small and in these rbcs there will be pallor because there is decreased in hemoglobin concentration so naturally there will be pallor so that is why there will be hypochromasia uh, that is why it is called as microcytic hypochromic anemia another thing which is very very important is that in the peripheral blood film what is called as rdw it will be increased now you will be uh, you will be thinking what is this rdw this man has never told me about rdw before that so rdw is the red cell distribution width let's take an example let's say in this slide there are rbcs of this size but you think about rdw that is red cell distribution width in this case, since all the RBCs, they are equal size, therefore the RDW will not be increased, rather it will be normal. But in case of microcytic hypochromic anemia, some of the RBCs, they are large, some are small and therefore the RDW is increased. Okay, now if we talk about the iron studies, first of all the serum iron, it will be decreased, that is why it is iron deficiency anemia. If we talk about the ferritin, naturally the ferritin will be decreased because once the serum iron has decreased, the only source of iron is the ferritin and that is why the ferritin will also be decreased. So serum iron will be decreased, the serum ferritin will be decreased. The next thing is that the total iron binding capacity will be increased because I told you if the ferritin goes down, the TIBC goes up and last thing is percentage saturation. The percentage saturation is decreased because now the iron has decreased in concentration and the protein molecules they have increased in concentration. So naturally the total iron binding capacity or so naturally the saturation that is the amount of molecules that are saturated with iron will be less. So therefore the TIBC, uh, therefore the percentage saturation will fall. So this is all about the iron deficiency anemia. I hope you like this video. For more videos like this, do subscribe to my YouTube channel.